Activate the cave. <laughs> Welcome to the cave of the Dog Shark. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm doing something different today. Uh, I'm mucking about with a Telecaster guitar that I've got here uh, and we're going to be basically installing a guitar pedal onto the guitar. Uh, why do we want to do that? Why not? It's fucking summer to do isn't it? We're all bored in lockdown and uh, looking for shit to do so I had the stuff and I thought why not give it a go. So what are we working with specifically? Well we have this beta guitar that I have here, this Telecaster. I thought this was kind of the ideal candidate to do this to. Um, and second to that we have our fuzz pedal specifically this is my scuzzle butts fuzzy nuts pedal um, a title so selected from the number of Z's apparent in it uh, I thought it was fuzz appropriately uh, named what it actually is is uh, from a company called Jed's Peds it's a circuit I bought from them guys uh, it's uh, their Fat Maggie uh, fuzz pedal which by all me by all intents and purposes is actually what what's called a zvex fuzz factory so it's a fuzz factory fuzz pedal really it is but i call it the scuzzle butts fuzzy nuts um so yeah i'm going to be banging this on this guitar so what else do we need to do this well first off we need some tape let's get cracking Right, well there we go, we're done. Uh, so our fuzz pedal is on our guitar and let's, we should probably plug her in now and see how she sounds. But actually no, in all seriousness, uh, that's not what we're doing at all. We're actually going to remove the circuit from the pedal. We're going to build it into the guitar. We're going to mount controls onto the guitar so we can control the pedal. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to have it all at our fingertips while we're playing the guitar. Now, okay, so we've got this thing apart. And we're looking at the circuit on the inside there and you can see apologies for the wiring i built this many years ago when i was just getting started building pedals so it's a bit of a mess in there but if you can see just on the circuit board there's those two little uh, sort of metal cylindrical capacitors oh, hold on we've got a visitor look who's here this is reggie if you've never seen reggie before massive dickhead proper whingy little wimp as well look at him say hello reggie hello what are you doing? Alright, well he's going to stay here with us for a bit. Uh, there is a practical reason why you might want th this particular type of fuzz circuit in your guitar. Now, there's two types of f fuzz pedals and that use two types of different transistors. There's silicon transistors and there's germanium transistors. And these specifically are germanium transistors. Now please correct me if I'm wrong, you know, shoot me down in flames if I've got this completely wrong but as I understand it uh, a fuzz with germanium transistors just reacts better when it's got direct line of sight in the signal path to the pickups on the guitar pedals as well that also gives you the better range of options with the, the the fuzz pedal it seems to react better to what it's hearing and, and, and then can uh, affect the signal uh, better oh, see you later Reggie so what's better than having it as your first pedal in the chain well even better is having it in the guitar itself right there sitting behind the uh, the output of the pickups uh, now there's a couple, few things that we're going to need to do to make this all work firstly we're going to have to be able to control the pedal from the guitar itself so um, Normally, with this being a foot switch pedal, it would be on a pedal board and it would be controlled by a foot to turn it on and off like that. But well, we're not going to be able to do that, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace that foot switch with a little toggle switch. And this is a DPDT switch, it's double pole, double throw. Uh, secondly, we're going to have to do something about all the knobs, all the control knobs on this. This has got five controls that you can change stuff with. Now, Having studied what other people have done, and specifically what Matt Bellamy's done when he's built 
fuzz factories or his guitar makers have built fuzz factories into his guitars what they actually do is they take just two of the controls off here and specifically we're talking about what called stab or stability and another one called comp or compression uh, and they mount those to the actual guitar itself so he can control those the rest of them and um, we're talking about the level uh, there's a gate uh, control and the drive level control uh, they're all built internal with you uh, with or, or just put out of the way so they they can be set uh, and left alone and then you can just play with the other two controls on the guitar pot on, on the on the guitar body so that's what we're going to do we've got we're going to try and reuse as much of this as we can uh, including the pots that uh, I want to be able to fiddle with from the outside of the guitar but those are the pots that need to be able to be changed from time to time or, or left and set as they are uh, I'm going to have to uh, change those pots and what I'm going to use instead is these little internal trimmers so I'm going to get rid of the, the pots on the actual pedal itself and I'm going to put these somewhere where I can set them uh, and then forget about them basically a couple of knobs I've uh, got some random ones I had lying around here those are going to be set onto the, the body of the guitar to control the two uh, things that I'm, uh, I want to control from the body I bought myself a new scratch plate for the guitar uh, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to keep the original one that's on here now uh, as is intact so in case I ever want to go back to having a normal style Telecaster than I can do um, so I bought this one because I, I, I want to modify this I want to drill a bunch of holes in it um, so as far as wiring all this up is concerned it's a fairly straightforward job I have I've built myself a wiring diagram which I'll probably splash up on the screen uh, for you to have a quick look at and probably make it available on my website at some point um, but the probably for me the most difficult part on this is going to be making space for everything underneath the scratch plate uh, let me take this scratch plate off and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we've got the scratch plate off and here you can kind of see now where the problem is. Uh, just don't pick up back in there. So underneath that scratch plate, excuse the uh, incredibly shite paint job, uh, this was a total DIY job, I was mucking about, didn't take it seriously at all, just chucked a load of paint on there one day anyway as you can see underneath that scratch plate it's solid wood so where are we going to fit everything we've got circuits to go in we've got uh, we obviously we need to create a battery compartment somewhere as well there needs to be a battery uh, to fit in this thing to power the circuit um, and then we've got all the the controls and everything well I'm gonna have to basically just gouge out a load of wood uh, don't have a proper router so this is going to be an interesting job done with drills and chisels and things like that right then so we have the circuit free of the enclosure so you can probably get a little closer look at those germanium transistors in there now you can see them there quite clearly so yeah we've got we've got to fit that minus a bunch of this gunk uh, into the uh, into the body of the guitar, so I'm just going to desolder some more bits that I know I'm not going to need, and then I'll uh, we'll get another quick look at this. Right, so had a little bit of a tidy up, and we're, we're where we want to be with our circuit now. We've got all of the. The pots removed that I don't need and as much of the wiring and everything removed as I don't need so now it's just about figuring out spacing where everything's going to go how everything's going to mount uh, and so the next thing I want to do is I want to have a look at what I'm going to do with these trim pots that I'm going to use these little things in place of the the bigger uh, pots that control the the, the volume the, the drive and the gate uh, controls of this particular circuit so I said earlier I was going to use a bit of this uh, to mount them to so I can then mount these inside the guitar maybe have them accessible from the outside uh, through some little holes, drill holes or something like that. Uh, so I'm just going to start add, putting them into this and, and seeing where I want to go with this, cutting this down to the size that I want it to be uh, and then we'll see, uh, we'll see where we end up. So we've got our guitar back on the uh, the bench here. 
uh, and we're just kind of eyeing things up for space now uh, and seeing where, where we want things to go and where we're going to have to route out some space for, for all the circuitry and so on. Uh, I kind of need to know, I've kind of got a good idea where I want everything to go, the last thing I really need to think about is where my battery is going to go so I'm just going to whip off uh, the main control uh, plate to see if there's enough space under there also. We're at a stage with this now where we've kind of got everything apart, we've kind of got things figured out where we want things to go uh, and now we need to start doing all the dirty work of actually uh, cutting out the body to make space for all the components that we're going to be installing under the pit guard. Uh, and I'm just going to take everything off the body, just so I'm not, uh, so I'm making sure I'm not drilling through anything or cutting anything unnecessarily. It can all be put back together after, no problem. I think as well, just because I'm dealing entirely with the body here, uh, just to make this whole thing a bit uh, un less unwieldy, I'm going to remove the neck, take that off, just put that out of the way. So at this point, yeah, I'm just going to take these last few bits and pieces off, uh, and then it's going to be down to the garage to start drilling. I don't think I'm going to show you that. Uh, I'm just going to show you the results of it once I'm uh, done with it and I'm happy that I am where I need to be. Right, so we're back. Uh, I've spent a bit of time uh, mucking about with the body of the guitar. We liberated it from everything. Uh, and as you can see now, we have a nice big cavity uh, in uh, this part of the guitar body here. Yes, it's ugly as sin. It's gouged out with drill bits and, and chisels and things like that. I've gone to the trouble of spray painting it black so it doesn't look quite as bad as uh, it would do otherwise. Uh, but the point being is that will all be hidden by the pit guard and we now have the space we need to insert all our electronics for our circuit, our fuzz circuit uh, and various other bits. I've uh, also managed to uh, to drill out the oops, drill out the, uh, the pit guard with the holes that we need for the controls and I've put a little hole in there just to give us some access to the, the trim pots. I'll probably enlarge in that at some point. Uh, all that really remains now is that we, we kind of wire this whole thing up and see how we get how we get on for space. Still got a little concern over the placement of the battery, but we'll just see how we go with that. So everything's here. We're kind of ready to, to start putting this all together from an electronics point of view. Um, so uh, yeah, let's let's get going with all that and, and see where we end up. All right. What are you doing here? Got a visitor again. Look, it's Freddy. He's come to see what I'm doing. He's always interested in what's going on with guitars, aren't you, Freddy? So you go up there while we do this. So, got our little control section, main control section for the guitar, kind of buttoned up a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do now is start wiring the uh, the switch that turns the effect on and off. So I think at this point what I want to try and do is deal with what's going on with uh, the circuit and the trim pots. So we've got space for three controls and their solder points on there and we've got our three trim pots here. Now I want to kind of try and keep this as neat as possible so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this ribbon cable uh, and just uh, work with that uh, to try and get these connections working out. Right, so we've got our trim pots now wired up with cables. You can probably see that there. Nice little bit of soldering around the back there. Uh, so now we've got to wire these to the actual circuit uh, in place of where the, uh, the original uh, pots went. So, we've now got our trim pots wired onto our circuit. They're not exactly how I'd uh, exactly how I envisioned, but they'll do. They're okay. 
Right, so just a final few connections to make really. Right, so there we go. Uh, I don't know how much of that you can actually see. Let me see if I can uh, hold it up and uh, show you what's going on. So, uh, all sorts of shit going on here so yeah we've got all our connections made we've got our trim pots uh, wired onto the circuit we've got the circuit all wired into everything else uh, and so really all we need to do now is test everything and see see what's going on uh, so let's fire up the amp plug it in and muck about and see uh, see what what's what if everything kind of works how we expect it to then we should hear some interesting stuff so Hey Google, turn the guitar rig on. I'm just going to plug this straight in here and see what the hell happens. Right. Volume up on the guitar. Nothing. Nothing. The guitar, as normal, seems to work. Which is good. It's what we want. For some reason, we flip the circuit on and we lose everything. Alright, so something's not right. Um, Holy shit! Two days later, or a day later, 24 hours later, I can't remember what. Uh, and I know it still looks like it's in a total freaking mess, um, but it seems to be working. I had to start improvising a little bit, trying to figure it out what was going on, a bit of problem solving. Um, turned out to be something to do with the trim pots uh, that I decided to use these to set the internal values of the controls that I didn't want to use. Um, don't know why but introducing these just seemed to throw the whole thing out of whack. Uh, so what I've ended up doing is I kind of knew where I wanted the values of the, uh, the those things set so what I did was took measurements from the original potentiometers at the point where I knew I wanted them to be set and then found resistors or made uh, resistors um, out of multiple resistors to measure to match the values that I wanted it set to and then put those in place of the potentiometers on the circuit so what I've basically got now is out of the five original controls that were on the circuit two that I can play with and three that are just set locked in they are what they are uh, and uh, we're not mucking about with them ever again. Testing it, I'm doing, I'm doing the old uh, classic tap test uh, on the pickup, so this is with the circuit turned off and you can kind of hear that's with the, the magnets of the pickup uh, and so uh, what did I want to hear when I switch the circuit on? Well this is it Okay, so, so that's what the Fuzz Factory does for you. Uh, in the process of mucking about with all this as well, I've done away with the kill switch for now. Turned out I had the wrong kill switch. I had a push to uh, break, whereas what I actually need is a push to make to dump the signal to ground. So I've got one of them on the way. I will fit that at a future date. Uh, I'm going to get this all uh, buttoned up again and, and then a pro properly put back together, full test, and then we'll see where we are. Okay, right, so we're done. Uh, our guitar is now completely back together, necks back on, it's all restrung, uh, and as you can probably see, our mutant Telecaster now has all the additional controls. We've got the uh, on off switch for turning the effects on and off, uh, we've got our stability and uh, compression controls there and we have the little switch in the middle here to control the uh, the mode of the circuit so we've got a, a clean tone this is with the effect turned off so twangy telly very nice so why don't we turn the effect on and see what happens
Okay, so we've got a nice fat full sound there, but there's there's lots can be done with this. There's lots of weirdness can be had with these controls. So let's let's have a little play with things and see uh, see what we get. So some weirdness. <laughs> So there's definitely some places with this you don't want to go because it's just unusable. Some really cool sounds though. I mean it's it's interesting, isn't it? It's just mad mental. There's a lot of that changes the circuit, there's a lot of that affects the signal, the volume part on the guitar, if you stab the signal a little bit, that does the thing. Uh, and then you've got the, the compression and uh, and stability controls there, you've got the different modes of the circuit uh, to flick through that give you different things. Uh, you don't even have to play a note to get something out of this, it's... Uh my video that was a lot of fun for me um, some interesting results there lots of crazy sounds coming out of that thing uh, totally worth it totally fun just a bit of a mess around will it ever be practically useful to me probably not will it be fun for me to muck about with and annoy my neighbors great yeah absolutely no problem so all right well thanks for watching um, don't forget to give me a subscribe spread this around your mates if, uh, if, if they find this sort of thing interesting uh, feel free to leave a comment you know rip me to bits tell me it's a lot of crap uh, ask me questions whatever you want to do it's all fun and games uh, and uh, yeah so uh, thanks for watching bye